Hello everyone, I'm Vibhor Singh and today we'll be discussing the 18th problem of the CP31 sheet under the 1300 rated problems. So as you can see, this is the CP31 sheet and the 1300 rated problems have been selected and this is the 18th problem, move and turn. So the problem states that a robot is standing at the origin of the infinite two dimension, dimensional plane. Each second the robot moves exactly one meter in one of the four cardinal directions, north, south, west, and east. For the first step, the robot can choose any of the four directions, but then at the end of every second, it has to turn 90 degrees left or right with respect to the direction it just moved in. For example, if the robot has just moved in north or south, the next step it takes has to either has to be either west or east and vice versa. The robot has exactly n steps from its starting position according to the rules above. How many different positions can the robot arrive to at the end? And the final orientation of the ro robot can be ignored. Okay, so what does the problem state? Let's see. Let's you're given a number n, which is the number of times the robot can move. So let's say it's initially at this position, and let's say the orientation is upside is north. Okay. So basically in each turn, starting from the first turn, you can move in any of the four directions, north, south, east, west. In the first turn, let's say I move to the right. Okay. Now the robot has to move, has to turn 90 degrees. So the next turn the robot takes has to either be up or be down. It cannot be right or left in the second turn. So because the first turn was right, the second one has to be up. Let's say the third one is left and fourth one is back down like that, something like that. And four turns the robot came to its initial position, right? Now, what we are given is the robot will make four turns. That is the end given to us and we need to print the possible positions. Possible positions of the robot after end turn. So something like if n is given as two, so initially you're at, let's say zero comma zero. Let's try to look at it as a coordinate system. So after one step, you could be anywhere in these four directions, right? So you have like four steps over here. Let's just remove this. And then you have four points over here where you are after the first step, right? Then let's try to represent with a different color after the second step. Now over here, I move up. So the next step can be either over here or over here, right? Similarly, over here I move right. So the next step can be either up or down. Similarly for here, it can be either right or left. And from here, it can be either up or down, right? So we have one, two, three, and four positions for n equal to two. We have four possible positions where and finally the robot can reach. So the, we'll be printing four for n equal to two and that's what is given to the problem. And for n equal to one also we saw after the first position, after the first one, there were four possible positions that is each representing the initial direction that we could have taken. So for one, the answer is four, for two, the answer is four. So that is how the problem uh, that is what the problem is. I hope you're able to understand the problem. Now let's move to the expected time complexity discussion. So as we know in code forces, one second corresponds to 10 raised to eight operations approximately, right? Now we are given N is equal to, or N is the upper bound for N is given as thousand, right? So any solution of the format of N, N log N, or even N square, like all these solutions will work, but if I go to something like n cube, which will go of the order of 10 raised to nine, something like this will not work, right? So we can draw a line over here that something like n square or even n square log n till there, we are fine till here. We are fine, but anything above that, something of the order of n cube, we don't want to look at solutions of that order, right? So that's it for the expected time complexity discussion. Now let's try to form a solution for the problem. So now first let's look at, see you're given n as the number of moves. Now there'll be some moves that you can make in the north-south direction. Let's just say we, that there can be some moves in the uh, up and down direction and some in the right-left direction. Okay. And let's try to represent in the number li line. Let's try to use a number line or the coordinate system for easy understanding. So let's use up, down and right, left, right. Okay. So if you have given, if you're given n for first Think in the first thing that we should do, look as look at is how many up down operations are there and how many left right operations are there, right? First thing that we should look at is 
like how many operations of which type we are doing or how many movements of which type we are doing so let's take two cases of n even and n odd okay let's just consider these two cases so for the case of n even that is n is even we know we'll have n by 2 up down direction and we'll have n by 2 in left right direction movements right we'll have movements in up down up down direction for n by 2 turns and right left for n by 2 like we saw in the example of 2 if the first step is towards the right or left the second step would be up or down right so after each step we are changing the like orientation or the direction of movement by 90 degrees that's why we'll have n by 2 up down and n by 2 left right operations in even very straightforward right now let's look at the case of odd for odd like let's say something like n is equal to 5 let's look at this if i start whichever orientation i start with will have an extra step right i will have three steps of one type of orientation and two steps of another type of orientation right let's say like for example if i start from left right so i'll take right first let's say then i take up then i take right again then i take up then i take right okay so i have 1 2 and 3 right three operations of right and one and two operations of up and down right so three operations of right left two of up and down similarly i could have started from up down so that in that case i would have one operation of up then right up right and up so i'll have three operations of up down and two of left right so it will be a mix of three two and the three can be either left right or up down so those are like two separate cases we'll handle while solving the problem right so till now we have the we have a clear idea of how many operations we would make right for each type like three is basically what is three it is n by 2 plus 1 and this is n by 2 right we have n by 2 plus 1 and n by 2 for odd so this is this gives us the number of steps of each type we would be doing now let's try to see the possible locations our robot can be when we have a particular number of steps of a type okay let's try to find that out let's say we are given that the robot makes x operations in let's say up down manner or north south manner or whatever you want to call it right so it makes x operations either up or down okay so one possible loki one possible way will be all x operations would go up right all x would go up so the final position would be x right another would be that there will be x minus 1 operations of up and one operation of down right in that case we'll have x minus 2 as the possible position right similarly it will go on go on go on till all there are zero operations of up and all operations of down where we'll have a minus x over here right so this would give us the total number of positions and how many positions would this be okay how many positions would this be this would be overall x plus 1 positions how are we getting this Let, let's just try to look at a simple number and try to do this right let's say x is 3 okay let's say x is 3 what will be the possible positions we could have we could have 3 we could have 1 that is 3 upwards and 1 down we could have uh, sorry 2 upwards and 1 down we could have 2 down and 1 up which would give us as minus 1 and we could have 3 down which would give us minus 3 so how many positions is this this is four positions right so for x is equal to 3 we got four positions that is like how we are getting that for x operations in any direction one up down direction i would have x plus 1 possible possibilities where my finally my robot can be now we know our up down operations and our left right operations are going to be independent of each other right i make three up down operations three left right operations they will never affect each other they are totally independent cases right so i can say that total number of possibilities where my up up down operation would get me into the total number of possibilities of left right should give me my answer why let's just looking at the looking at axis basically let's look at this as the y axis right and we are representing up as plus so i got four positions of possible y coordinate to be 3 1 minus 1 and minus 3 similarly these four positions are possible for the x coordinate as well right 
So total number of combinations that is would be any four of these values for the x coordinate followed by any four of these values for the y coordinate. So the total number of possible positions would just become four into four, right? So which is basically x plus one into x plus one, right? And for a given n, we know what x is, x is n by two. So we'll have n by two plus one square for n even, right? For n even. Right, for n even, it's a very simple case, right? n by two plus one square. But what, is, what about n odd for when n is odd, right? For odd n, let's look at that case as well, right? For n is, for even n, it was very simple, right? For odd n, we have n by two operations of one type and n by two operations, n by two plus one operations of the other. So like it might be n by two top bottom and n by two plus one left, right? And vice versa, right? So I know when I fix that, okay, my first operation would, let's say be uh, up down. So my up down operations would have n by two plus one, right? So the total possible y coordinates would be n by two plus one plus one again, right? The, like x plus one, right? X is n by two plus one. So this would be n by two plus two, right? Into total number of x coordinates, which would come from this number n by two, that is n by two plus one, right? Where n by two is our x over here. Right. But this is, I said that up down is first, right? Similarly, I would have another case of left, right is first. Mm. Now in this case, also I will get the same number of possibilities, right? I'll get the same number of possibilities n by two plus two into n by two plus one, right? Now, why would we get the same number of possibilities? It's pretty simple, right? Right now, earlier we had n plus n by two plus one up down operations. Now we have n by two plus one left right operations. And over here, the left right operations were n by two. Over here, the up down operations would become n by two plus one. So it's just vice versa, but the overall number of operations would be the same in both cases, right? Now, the only thing we need to account for is, are there any overlaps in these two, right? That we want to remove. We can, we not just simply add them if they are overlapping, right? So we want to consider, will they ever overlap? So let's just look at this. Let's just look at a very simple case of n equal to three. Let's say I start with a left, right operation. So I'll move twice to the right, let's say, and once up, right? And I'll come to something like two comma one. Okay. Notice that my X coordinate is even and my Y coordinate is odd. Now let's say I start from up down direction. So I'll move two up and one to the right and I'll come over here. In this case, my coordinate would be one comma two. Over here, my X is odd and Y is even. So what you will observe is all possible positions, as we saw initially, we could have X as a position for X operations of a type. We could have X minus two as a position. We could have X minus four as a position, so on and so forth, right? But we could never have something like X minus one as a position. So the positions of the coordinate will always be of the same parity for the same number of moves. So I know if I start from right, left, my X coordinate will always be even. And when I start from up down my y coordinate will be even and x coordinate would be odd. So from here I will get a very clear idea. I'll get a very clear idea that these two possibilities over here that we have that is starting taking up down operation as first and left right operation as first. These two possibilities will never overlap. So I can simply add these two and get the total number of operations, total number of operations to be two into n by two plus one into n by two plus two. for odd number of, for n odd. So for n even, we got the formula to be n by two plus one square. And for odd n, we got the formula to be two into n by two plus one into n by two plus two. So I hope you're able to understand the solution and how it is coming. It's just using mathematics, we're getting the solution. So moving on to the code of the problem, we're given 
n we are taking n as the input and then we are just defining a value k which is equal to n by 2 because we are using n by 2 in all our formulas and i'm defining answer to be 0 i'm taking it as long long int because it's going up the order of n square although this will not go over the value of int i've just defined it as long long int you can define it as int as well for even n we know the formula to be n by 2 plus 1 into n by 2 plus 1 and i've just made n by 2 equal to k i've taken it in a variable so it's k plus 1 square that could be the answer for n to be even and for odd n our answer would be 2 into n by 2 plus 1 into n by 2 plus 2 and then finally we're printing the answer so looking at the space and time complexity of the solution it's very clear so uh, for the time complexity there are no loops only if else statements and simple multiplications so the overall time complexity would be order of 1 since there is nothing and the space complexity will also be of order of 1 since we have not taken any extra space only some 2-3 variables to form our solution I hope you were able to understand the solution to the problem it had a very keen mathematical idea and if you're able to deduce it that only the, I think the odd part where you had to deduce that they'll never overlap once you're able to come to that it is a pretty simple solution hope you're able to understand it thank you